Agent 47 returns home to the PC. Just as John said in his video covering the Xbox One X version, this is a fantastic looking game with some neat tech choices. Render to texture reflections? Check. Extensive use of parallax occlusion mapping? Check. Fully physicalized pants? Double check. But coming to the PC here, we're getting some positives wrapped up in a semi-incomplete package at the moment. You can catch a sense of this when peering into the graphical options menu, or just when the game launcher pops up. Unlike Hitman 1, Hitman 2, as of November 11th, does not have a DirectX 12 option and has rather limited choices beyond this. Gone is the ability to determine your anti-aliasing type, and instead SMAA T1X is enforced throughout. And its look is sharp, but I'm always a proponent of choice, even when there's questionable aesthetic consequences. HDR? Well, it's in there and you get some control options, but I could not get it working in spite of my display and Windows being configured for it. So yeah, with these more limited graphical options, you generally have less wiggle room than before to configure to your liking, but that does not mean the options themselves presented are ineffective. Quite the contrary, actually. The level of detail option is essentially going to be the area where you can claw back the most performance on average in most scenes. It controls both the distance of lower level of detail models for opaque geometry as well as the rendering distance of transparent assets, such as grass and leaves and the like. Using an RX 580 as a base at 1080p, going from ultra to high sees 46% performance increase here in the punishing another life stage. Ultra to medium, 94% increase. And ultra to low, a 100% performance increase. This performance increase is not applicable everywhere in the game, but it is still extremely significant. On some stages, you could be 60 FPS on ultra, but with lots of transparency and foliage, you can see incredible dips downward in performance. Unsurprisingly, this is the area where the Xbox One X makes compromises. The Xbox One X here sits somewhere between medium and low for level of detail settings. Opaque objects look to be around medium, while incidental foliage like the leaves here are like low. In general, I recommend medium here as an optimized way to keep up performance on mid-range cards. It will also prevent wild swings in performance between stages. Going over to shadows, we see a similar situation. This mainly controls the resolution of shadows cascades present in the game, but does not turn off shadow casting or shadow rendering distance. In this scene, going from ultra to high nets a performance increase of around 9%. Ultra to medium, 17%. And ultra to low, 22%. While that may seem fantastic, it does not apply to every scene as such. In this scene, for example, another rendering load here is the limiting factor in performance, so it doesn't have really any big effect when you change the shadow resolution. In general, I find this setting slightly disappointing, as it does not allow for greater scaling in general above the Xbox One X here. Here the Xbox One X uses the Ultra Quality option. That means Ultra Quality on PC has those same artifacts John has already mentioned in his video. Shadow Cascades into the distance have that same level of aggressiveness on PC, looking quite blocky, just as they do on the Xbox One X. Similarly, Crowd NPC shadows disappear at the same short distance radius from the camera. It would be nice to have greater control here and granularity to push these things to more extreme levels. Here I recommend Ultra. The last meaningful graphical option is SSAO, but you do not have the ability to control its quality. Rather, it is just a simple toggle. In this scene, we see a healthy performance gain of 13% when going from on to off. With that being said, I cannot recommend turning it off at all, as the game's shading and shadowed region suffers much without it, and the performance increase is not so universal in every scene. Unsurprisingly, the Xbox One X has SSAO set to on. After this, the options do not leave much room for meaningful change for most users. Texture quality does exactly what it says, reducing the resolution of textures from high, normal, and then to low. High at 1080p generally saw sub 4GB usage at around 3.6GB, normal at around 32 
and low at 2.5 or 2.6. 4K though will require a card with more than 4GB of VRAM at the highest texture settings. Importantly, this setting does not affect parallax occlusion mapping at all. Anisotropic filtering also does what it says, but as per usual and my recommendation, set it to 16x and forget it. Xbox One X also takes a similar approach here and is using a high level of anisotropic filtering looking like 16x or maybe 8x as far as I can tell. And that's it. Beyond this, you cannot control anything else really. Remember how John pointed out that render to texture reflections on console run at quarter resolution? So 1080p at 4K on Xbox One X? Well, on PC they're full resolution, so 4K at 4K, which is great of course, but you cannot tweak that. So if they are the main limiter of performance in some scene, then you cannot change that at all. Like here, the RTX 2080 Ti is basically a flat 60, but there are so many full resolution reflections here that it causes it to buckle. Having control of the reflection resolution to make them half or quarter res would be welcome. It would also allow me to test out more perfectly approximated console settings on PC, which is always good fun, right? This lack of control here brings me to performance in general. As is, the game performs well, but with some caveats since the graphical options are just so bare. An ASUS ROG Strix GeForce RTX 2080 Ti paired with a Ryzen 1700X, 16GB of RAM at 3200MHz and an SSD on the 416.81 driver could basically run the game at ultra settings at 4K and at 60fps, but not completely. See, Ryzen here is a major letdown. In a number of scenes, the RTX 2080 Ti is heavily limited and just sees sputters and dips below 60 FPS due to the Ryzen. And that is not due to faulty hyperthreading utilization. I checked. With hyperthreading off, the game runs noticeably worse, actually. To put this in perspective, the Ryzen is so limiting to performance that a GTX 1060 with an Intel Core i5-8400 and slower RAM can outperform the RTX 2080 Ti Ryzen combo at 1080p. Ryzen just lacks the oomph here where it matters most. To be frank, Ryzen's performance here is extremely disappointing. This is where I think the removed DirectX 12 renderer could have been a great benefit to aid the CPU limited scenarios that we also saw in Hitman 1. Moving over to the mid-range, our usual two contenders fare rather well, or at least as well as they can given the situation. Much like the Xbox One X, neither GPU is capable of 4K30 or a 1440p60 at ultra settings. When dropping to approximate Xbox One settings though, by dropping level of detail to medium, the story gets more interesting. The RX 580 manages a 4K30, with the GTX 1060 being right on the line and generally far behind the RX 580. 1440p the two cards trade blows with the Xbox One X depending upon the scene. While the RX 580 is better at lower settings and at higher res, at 1080p Ultra we see a very different story. On the Another Life stage, not even 1080p 60 is guaranteed if you just use a flat Ultra settings. In this stage, the GTX 1060 outperforms the RX 580 by 32%. This is why turning down the level of detail settings to medium is so important. Doing so for this allows performance to come back up to 60fps at 1080p. And check this out, if you compare the RTX 2080 Ti here, to the RX 580 at the same stage, but at 4K and at ultra settings, it is getting nearly double the performance with four times the resolution. That's just insane. To sum it up, set those LED settings to medium, which are basically like Xbox One X settings, but are in fact higher since we cannot tweak everything. The GTX 1060 and RX 580 manage a great 1080p experience with those settings. They offer a compromised 1440p 60 experience to a certain degree. With the RX 580 pulling ahead, both cards cannot manage a 4K 30 and we cannot match Xbox One X settings to test. With this, mid-range users can also expect no strange camera or animation problems like the 30fps camera movement on console. And as far as I can tell in an unscientific investigation, on PC you will get the least amount of input latency as well. With that more positive note, I feel it is important to iterate again in closing. At the moment, the amount of control you get in the graphical menus is disappointing in Hitman 2. There should be greater control over things like anti-aliasing, shadow behavior, and render to texture resolution. Ryzen's disappointing performance also brings into question the dropping of DirectX 12 support which indeed might have helped the CPU shine more than it currently does. 
There are of course conditions making this as it is. The studio saw some change up of staff and probably had a different development cycle this time around for all versions of the game, PC included. Perhaps maintaining the DirectX 12 render was one step too far to get the game out on time. This could also be the reason why the announced Deep Learned Super Sampling Support or DLSS is not found in the game at the moment. Perhaps that will come out with more graphical options, a low level API, and more game content in time. I hope so, as the game underneath here is very enjoyable, and hopefully you have enjoyed this video as much as I have enjoyed playing Hitman 2, even if Ryzen sometimes makes me extremely sad. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you are already a subscriber, please consider that bell button in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to talk to me about your experience with Hitman 2 on PC, and maybe how you got HDR working, write a comment below or follow me and Digital Foundry on Twitter. As always, this is Alex, bidding you farewell und auf Wiedersehen.